Hey guys, it's Bailey and welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for tuning in for what's going to be a review of, I would say it's a highly anticipated brush collection because it's so stinking beautiful. It's the new e.l.f. Beautifully Precise Brush Collection. They sent me all of them, nine new brushes ranging from $5 to $12. So I wanted to run down, talk about each one, compare them to brushes that exist in the current e.l.f. brush collection, a few of them anyway, along with some others just so you could get a size and shape comparison and then tell you how I like to use them and ultimately whether or not I would recommend them to you. So let's go ahead and dive in. So to start off, there are four eye brushes. All of these retail for $5, but I want to first start with talking about the face brushes. These vary between $10 and $12. The three smaller brushes here are $10 and the two here are $12. So let's first start with the $12 brushes. Let's first start with this weird one. I feel like this is one that caught a lot of people's eye because of the unique shape and the fact that it has this interesting bubble texture. In fact, it's called the Multi Blender Massager. And I have to read so they sent like an information sheet. I have to read directly off of it because it was kind of like, I don't know, a weird description to me. It said, short and curved with tiny massage bubbles in all caps to blend in any foundation, powder, or bronzer with the ultimate ooh-ah feels. For pro application, apply foundation to the back of your hand, then swirl the foundation into the brush and paint over your face until smoothly blended. I think all of that sounds good in principle, but when actually put to the test, there's just so much surface area to this brush. I found that I ended up using more product and not getting as even an application as I would have liked. I think the most ideal way to use this is with a stick foundation. I've currently been using the Makeup Forever Ultra HD. That, it, things go on a little bit smoother when I use that, but especially when it comes to liquid, whether I apply it to the back of my hand, I dab it on my face first, this is just a little hard to get even application without really having to go over the top. And when it comes to the textured bubbles, I really don't, I mean, maybe I'm not sensitive enough to, to feel them, but I really don't notice any sort of textured massaging action happening as I use it. Even though it's shaped, to nicely fit the contours of your face, it is harder to get, I mean, I wouldn't go applying like contour here, blush and highlight. I wouldn't try and do one fell swoop because it does come off looking a little bit streaky. I tried just to see if there was just some sort of innovative use for this brush. I, this is this is the one brush in the collection that I have to say I would pass over just because even though the idea is great, it just is not practical for me. As far as brushes go though, it feels very sturdy. This is the only one in the collection that is entirely mirrored, has an entirely mirrored finish. The rest have acrylic handles, which I'll get to later. Uh, but overall, it feels like it's going to last. The bristles are super soft and the same can be said for all of the brushes in this collection. They feel really nice against the skin and they do a really good job at blending. This shape here is just what really throws me on this brush. The next $12 brush is a powder brush. Look at how big this guy is. This is one that I wanted to compare. So against the e.l.f., I think this is just the powder brush from the Studio Collection. Look at that size comparison. This is insane. Guys, this brush is huge. This one is from Pure Minerals. This is probably the biggest powder brush I own besides this e.l.f. one now. Um, I mean, this, this guy is just Look at how fluffy that is. It's crazy big and fluffy. Great for powder. I've used it to apply setting powder all over. I've used it. I actually prefer it to apply bronzer. I have been using this from Pure Minerals or Pure Cosmetics, and it's just really nice to swirl in there, get a really nice, nice dusting all over, and then I go in with another brush from this collection to kind of carve out my contour a little bit more. But this just does a really great job at beautifully blending that product out. I will say when it comes to setting powder, it's not great at getting into any precise places. One thing that I like about this smaller one from e.l.f. is that it has a slightly tapered tip so you can actually press powder into your under eye area, whereas this guy, there is really no precision to be had there. It is for an all over sort of setting powder job. And I, I tend to find I need to go in with a separate brush to pat in because that's just like, look at that, that's ridiculous. That's like a quarter of my face right there. Overall, is it necessary? You know, maybe not if you don't, if you find you have a bronzer brush in your collection that already does the job. $12 at this point isn't necessarily the cheapest brush on the market. Real Techniques has some. I mean, obviously, Elf even has some powder brushes, but this is 
unique to me in that, I mean, it like, like I said, it's easily the biggest brush I own. So if you, you know, can see this working for your collection, I would recommend it because I have found a place for it in mine. Now let's get into the $10 brushes and start with this guy, the Airbrush Blender. This is what I prefer to use for my foundation, what I use today, what you'll see me using in the demo. Uh, it's pretty close to my kind of go-to dense, fluffy buffing brush. The twist here is that you can see it's slightly angled and it has this flat edge over here, which I find is great for blending in concealer or even just foundation in the under eye area. You could also use it for a heavier contour. That kind of angled surface here makes it great for a liquid or cream product in the contour area. So you have a little bit of versatility there as well. I think that additional curvature to the shape is what, and that added versatility that it gives, is what makes it worth this price tag for me because like I said earlier we're, we're kind of inching out of the realm of the budget elf price tag that they're pretty well known for and so part of me was like why don't I just use my Real Techniques buffing brush it's just as good gets the job done I've been using it and loving it for forever but that angle portion right there is makes all the difference when you go into blend and even if you're just using it as a foundation if you overdo your contour like I actually did today over here it's really nice to go in and blend that out lightly. Next up is the airbrush stipple, and this guy kind of took me by surprise. It looks like a blush brush, right? This far away, you can't really see that there are two lengths of hairs, or maybe you can, I'm not really sure, but there are. Basically, it looks like the Real Techniques metal collection because to me, the handles, the tapered handles are super, super similar, but this one in particular, the Real Techniques, I think this is a blush brush, the number 300 from Real Techniques, it looks similar to that, not quite as tapered here on top, but relatively tapered. But what really makes this brush unique is you just have this very thin layer of fine hairs up here that make it great for stippling. To me, that makes all the difference with this brush because it makes applying cream, which is what I typically think of, the product I typically like to apply with a stippling, uh, stippling brush, but also powder. It makes it super easy to get a much lighter hand. You just touch the top, like the super thin fibers here, to the top of the product, and as you go and work in then you press harder and the more dense buffing part of the brush comes down on your cheek and really helps buff and blend that out but depending on the pressure you use you can buff and blend out more have a lighter application I just I, at first I thought this was going to be absolutely useless with as few like long hairs as it looks like are up there but I actually prefer this to the more traditional looking duo fiber with the black and then the longer white bristles on top I prefer this way more Another side note, one problem I would always have with those kind of longer black and white duo fiber stipple brushes is streakiness. Those longer fibers were so much longer that they would drag across my skin before I could press down hard enough to get to those black fibers to buff and blend. And once again, like I said, you, I just don't have that problem with this because these are so thin. They do a good job at applying the product, but it's I don't have to press too hard before I get the buffing action of this nice rounded brush underneath. So would totally recommend that one. And then the last face brush is, it's like a giant eyeshadow C brush, but for the face. And this is the sculpting brush. As it sounds, it's great for contouring. Elf has a few of these. Here is one you can see slightly curved. They also have one that is flat across. I reviewed these. I'm not a super fan. I just found that these super sharp, abrupt edges made my foundation look sharp and abrupt. The C, the rounded edges here, definitely make for a softer looking contour. And so the way I have found it using it is once again with that same bronzer I like to use, but you can see here there are strips. And so this is the perfect width to fit in one of those strips to go in and contour really nicely. So what I found is that I'll go in with the big bronzer and then I'll take this guy and go in really lightly with a contour. Is it necessary? No, I find I more often than not just go in with a bronzer and then I'm done for the day. But it is nice to have if you are an everyday kind of contourer or you just enjoy a good top contour, this might be for you, but it's definitely not one that I would say is a must have from this collection. Now before moving on to the eye brushes, I do want to say that you can buy these three face brushes in a set. You don't save any money on them, so I'm not sure why they group them together unless it's like making it easier for you to get your full face essentials. But in that set, you get the face massager, this guy, the stippling face brush, and then the big old powder brush. 
I would say buy them individually because you're not saving any money on the bundle. And like I said earlier, um, I'm not a super fan of the ma face massage with this guy, this weird paintbrush thing. Yeah, not for me. Now onto the eyeshadow brushes. Like I said before, each of these retails for five bucks. Let's first start with the, it's just called an eyeshadow brush. Here for reference, it looks and acts and feels a lot like the normal I think it's still a dollar, the C brush. Maybe they have one for the studio. I couldn't find my C brush. The closest one I could find is the e.l.f. blending brush. So I'll give you a close up here. The shape is obviously very different, but for me personally, the use is exactly the same. And you'll see in the demo here, I use this to apply my all over shadow. The tip is rounded and kind of fluffy enough that I can go in for a more precise crease application as well as a more buffed out crease application. It's narrow enough, however, that you can get some powder on the uh, lower lash line as well if you're looking for a little bit more of a messy smudge sort of look and less of a sharp under eye situation, if that makes sense. Basically, it's a very versatile brush, but I have to say for the $5 price tag, I don't think it's any more useful than one of their other cheaper brushes, either in the studio line or in the essentials line. Next up is the Smoky Smudge Brush, and although the shape isn't terribly unique, I do think it's very unique for this price point, both within e.l.f. as well as any other like affordable brush line out there. You can see it has this ultra precise point, but dramatically tapers outward. So it's really great for getting a soft smudge on the lower lash line, upper lash line, as well as really dramatically smoking out like a wing or cutting a crease. This just is so useful in my eyes, and there aren't a whole lot out there in the $5 price range. So I really recommend getting this guy. Then there is an eyeliner brush, and this is more of a pencil point brush. It's not an angled eyeliner brush, which makes it a little bit more versatile on the little fact sheet they provide. Even they say that it's great not only as an eyeliner brush, but lip liner, brow product applicator, or precision point concealer brush. So in that way, the shape makes it super useful. However, I will say because it's an ultra fine tip, but it's not so fine that I find it's easy to get a really, really fine wing here on the outer corner. I find I, I need to kind of like turn and shift it depending on how, as it layers product, the, sh the brush kind of deforms. So I find I need to like turn it to get, find its most fine side, if that makes sense. As a result, if you are big on you know, really precise, big winged, or, or even not a big, but just ultra precise wing. This might not be for you just because that angled or more severely tapered tip is going to get a more precise wing. But if you, you know, if you don't mind a relatively thicker wing or line on the top, not a wing, this might be a good one for you because it serves all those other purposes that I just mentioned. And last is a good old dual sided brow brush. On one end here, you do have that angled liner and on the other end, you have a spoolie. Now I do have one, I have the studio version of this, just the eyebrow, the eyebrow duo brush. The spoolie is exactly the same. On this one, it's tilted, but gotta be honest guys, now this one's tilted. Like it's just a matter of that identical spoolie. The angled brush is what makes the real difference here. On the studio version, it's the fibers are longer. I find for me that makes it harder to get a more precise line. And then they are, this is also a thicker brush. Once again, it's going to make it hard to get a really crisp thin line there. Ugh, someone's blowing leaves at like 8 a.m. guys. I'm sorry. The video is almost done. Just bear with me if you can hear that like dull kind of drone in the background. Um, so yeah, basically the length of the bristles and the thinness of the liner is the main difference between these two. And I have to say I do prefer the beautifully precise version better. And honestly, if you find that the actual liner brush isn't for you in terms of creating a wing, go ahead and try the brow brush because like I said, it is super, super thin. So it might just give you that exact precise wing that you're looking for. Lastly, the eye brushes are also sold in a set. Basically, it's all except the brow brush. But like the other site, you're not saving any money. It retails for 15 bucks. That's $5 a brush, exactly the same as you'd pay individually. So if you'd rather mix and match, you can do that as well. Closing thoughts, overall, it's a great brush collection. As I've kind of explained throughout the video, some of these brushes I would definitely recommend were others I didn't I didn't think were especially unique or useful, especially compared to what else Elf offers within their existing line of brushes. But aesthetically, they are beautiful. But I will say the plastic or acrylic or whatever this is, it does get a little smudgy. So you are just gonna have to, you know, 
clean them or you know or not but just be aware I mean it does for as beautiful as they are they do kind of collect fingerprints like that but besides that guys, that is it for me. I really hope you enjoyed this video. You found it useful. It kind of shed some light on all of these new brushes from e.l.f. to help you make your decision if you're considering purchasing them. I'd love to hear in the comments if you are, which ones, you know, piqued your interest and in which you'll be leaving. Definitely let me know in the comments below. Besides that, thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys.